Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and today uh, I'm out on SourceForge.net. I'm going to be doing a review of uh, full system setup and review, rather, of a recent distro spin. It was done by uh, Jim Acklaw in the UK, and it's called Arctic OS. I'll put a link uh, to the uh, SourceForge uh, website down under the video. Um, because uh, Arctic OS, it's really Arctic Zero S. Um, I found out that the link is not an O but an, a zero. So I don't know if that was an error or intentional. But uh, anyway, uh, here is the website, and I'm out on it. Uh, it looks like a very popular uh, distro. It's got 3,751 uh, downloads this week. Um, and uh, you can find out more about it here, uh, read about it here, the features that are available. It's based on PC Linux uh, OS, as you see here. And um, I've tried to give it a spin in uh, VirtualBox 6.0 Manager. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, and the reason I'm bringing you this uh, um, review is also to alert folks who are running VirtualBox 6.0 Manager that... Uh, the distro will not load properly uh, to be tested in VirtualBox 6.0, and I found a way to do it, so I'm going to be bringing that up in my video as well. A uh, good mate of mine in Australia uh, by the name of Backyard Tech has already done a, uh, a review of Arctic OS for Jim, and he used uh, ESXi server uh, VMware. Um, he didn't run into the same problem I did where it wouldn't load or wouldn't launch, but he did run into an issue where he could not get it to come up in the 1920 by 1080 full screen or widescreen resolution, 16 by 9 um, aspect ratio, and he could not get um, VMware or VM tools installed in the operating system. He was unsuccessful in doing that. So I'm going to bring uh, this particular review to you today um, to point out a few things, um, to tell you what I do like about it, what I don't like about the distro, uh, and so if you want to join me, uh, let's get into it. Let's look at Arctic OS from Jim Icklaw in the UK based on PC Linux OS. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm in my virtual machine 6.0 manager. I'm going to click machine and new. I'm going to call this thing PC Linux OS even though it is based on the Arctic OS KDE Plasma 2019 from Jim Icklaw uh, on SourceForge. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you call it. Uh, so I'll just give it that name. Um, I'm going to give this thing um, 4096 megabytes of RAM. It's based on 4.x Linux 64-bit. And then click Create. I'm uh, going to give this thing 75 gigabytes of VDI uh, dynamically allocated hard drive space. Click Create. Now let's go up to Settings. And in Settings here, I'm going to click System and Untick Floppy. Select hard disk and move it up the boot order. For display, I'm going to give this thing a full 128 megabytes of RAM, I mean of video memory. I'm going to move away from the VBox VGA, which I normally use, to VM SVGA, which is required here for VBox. And um, go ahead and select the optical disk media and select that Arctic OS Plasma 2019 ISO from Jim Acklaw. Click OK. I downloaded that earlier. For audio, I do want audio, so I've taking the defaults here for networking. I'm going to create a bridged adapter and then for USB 3.0 and click OK. And uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started. I'm going to click Start, launch it, and uh, bring it up. And then I'll do the usual view and select um, the full screen mode. Now I had to move away from live CD and safe mode and video safe mode to install. It's the only way I could get uh, this particular distro to actually run in uh, virtual machine, uh, VirtualBox 6.0 manager. Otherwise it fails on the X window. Um, Backyard Tech, a good mate of mine in Australia, uh, ran into a similar issue with VMware. Um, he could not bring it up to 1920 by 1080 and so he was never able to get VMware tools installed as well. So I was able to do that here with VirtualBox. All right, so we now are at the installer. Let's select US keyboard for me and click next. And then uh, let's click next here. 
And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to use the entire free space, doing nothing fancy here. Click Next and let it go ahead and launch. And uh, click Next again. And it's starting to format the partition. Okay, so this is going to take a while, and so I'm going to stop the video at some point here and come back when it's completed. Okay, so we've completed the um, installation, and I'm going to go ahead and restart the system here. Uh, Arctic OS KDE Plasma, and um, comes up to this screen here. Uh, for the boot, boot menu, and um, it isn't at the 1920 by 1080 yet, but we should get that. Now that I've installed uh, VirtualBox Guest Editions, I had to do that as well to get this thing to render into 1920 by 1080. Uh, but it does run now. Uh, as I said earlier, VirtualBox 6.0 Manager wouldn't run uh, until I made the changes that I made that I showed you earlier. Uh, in order to get it to come up and then when it did come up it did not render in the full 1920 by 1080 so I had to install VirtualBox guest editions and uh, and when I restarted the system it did come up to full screen I, I'm not going to put you through that um, you know how to do that um, I will show you the process the link to it here when I get in but um, needless to say I, I was able to bring it up finally to a widescreen profile. Let's click on Data Pioneer here and put in my password. And I notice the password doesn't appear, doesn't even, the asterisks don't appear there on the screen display for some reason. But it's coming up now. And um, unlike a Backyard with his ESXi experience in VMware, he wasn't able to get VM tools installed. I was able to get my V uh, VirtualBox guest editions installed. And the way I did that, and here we are, this is Arctic OS KDE Plasma 2019 11 13 from Jim Law. Um, looks really nice. I mean, I, I like the, the appearance out on the screen. Um, very nice background that we have here. I do not like the panel being on the left. It's too, for me, it's too un, uh, Ubuntu ish, and I will move that. Uh, but let me show you. I click on uh, application menu here and come down to, or up to rather, uh, software center, I believe it is. And then I come across here's the VBox Guest Edition installer. This is what I used to install VBox Guest Editions into the OS to get it to come up to uh, full screen. Uh, without doing that, uh, when I went into the display, I could not get 1920 by 1080 uh, as an option. And so I had to install VBox Guest Editions. Now let me explain. I am a almost 25-year user of Linux. I know what I'm doing in Linux. I've been using VirtualBox uh, when it was 5.0, maybe even 4.0. I've been using VirtualBox for a long time. Um, I have never had to install VirtualBox Guest Editions in any Linux distro or uh, BSD Unix distribution uh, for the last year and a half, two years. Um, if I select the VBox VGA Display Controller in the setup, uh, it renders in the 1920 by 1080 every time. If it doesn't, do that by default in a distro or a Unix BSD uh, OS that I install. I'm always able to go into the display right away and select the 1920 by 1080. It's there for me. This particular, I'm not sure why, and it may not be Jim's fault. Could be that it's a PC Linux OS issue, not an Arctic OS KDE Plasma issue. But for whatever reason, um, it did not come up the properly and I had to install VBox Guest Editions. You see, this is the first distro I've encountered in a long time where I've had to do that. So I'm just warning you VBox users, um, if you want to render this in VirtualBox or virtual environment, which I highly recommend, by the way. Uh, I mean, I do that for every distro I test. I never install a distro on bare metal. I always run it in VirtualBox as a VM first in the hypervisor, 
uh, before I put it on bare metal, uh, regardless of what people say you should do. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm told, go ahead and just put it on bare metal, that'll work. No, I, I run it in a VM first and test it out. And then if it works, then I put it on bare metal, not the other way around. So let's see what we have here. Uh, I should be able to go in here and unlock the widgets and configure or edit the panel rather and move this thing uh, to the bottom and I am able to do that so that's good because I do not like it along the side. I don't like the fact that this is over here. I want it over here but I'm going to live with it for now. I know I can move it around uh, at some point when I figure this out but so this is Arctic OS KDE Plasma 2019 1113 as I like it to, to see it initially. Um, there are some other changes I would like to make with it. Uh, may or may not do it in this video. But let's go see what we have here. Um, along the bottom we have the file manager PC Man FM. Uh, I am partial to PC Man FM. We do have the uh, terminal and I believe that is Secura terminal. Um, here's a browser I'm not familiar with. Uh, let's go ahead and launch it. It's called Waterfox Browser. Uh, I use Mozilla Firefox and I use Chrome. Uh, and, uh, and when I'm in Windows 10, I use um, the Edge for Chromium browser. Let's bring it up to full screen. This is the Waterfox 2019.10 release. Uh, if I click on the pancake and go out here, uh, let's see if I can, um, well, let's just customize preferences. We've got preferences as well. It doesn't tell me what version of Waterfox. Well, I, this is the version, 2019.10 release here. Uh, I am not familiar with this browser at all. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, go up to YouTube. See if I can go to YouTube here, and I am connected, wired connected, so I should be able to. Yeah, here we go. And I'm going to go up to my uh, my videos. So let me go ahead and sign in here. Oh, I thought I had selected um, the keyboard for US, and it looks like this is the UK keyboard. So give me a moment, let me minimize, and uh, let's go out to keyboard. All right, and um, it's currently on the layout here, it should be, yeah, UK. Let me go ahead and add the uh, US keyboard. Um, so for English, and um, layout should be English United States there we go and then click OK so I'm going to switch to that I'm going to apply it I'm going to leave the UK there and click OK and now let's get back into the browser I should be able to do what I wanted to do I couldn't have I didn't have the at symbol on my keyboard oops that's the password I don't want to do that let me uh, let me go back out again and let's try this again. Okay. I'm going to need to sign in, but now I should have access to the at symbol because my username is my email address at Gmail. So let me put that in. Why is it not working? Ah, um, let's see. Let me go back out here to keyboard. Thought I set it to US. Could have sworn I did that. Layout. I'm going to get rid of UK. Just remove it all together. Now I've got US. Now I know it's there. I'm going to click OK. Let's try this again. At. There we go. Dan Calloway at gmail.com. Let's click next. Let me put in my password. Click next. I want to test the sound. That's what I'm doing here, guys. 
I want to see if I have sound capability within this operating system, this Linux distro. And to do that, I'm going to go to my video so there's not an issue with uh, copyright infringement. So let's click channel. And let me go to my videos. And let me select this one here. Let me bring this up to maximum. So I'm listening to the sound now. So I do have sound. That's great. And you should be able to hear it as well. If you don't, um, just trust me, you do have video or sound. Okay, so we have that okay. It looks fine. So this browser is not too bad. I mean, I do have sound capability. It is rendering the videos in my YouTube channel okay in, uh, in this particular Linux distro. So let me go ahead and close this. Get back out to the desktop and let's see what else we have here. Um, we have the um, Thunderbird mail client. I do not use that. I use web-based mail. And then we get the usual things over here on the right hand side. I'm not going to go through all of these other than we do have a calendar. Today is the 21st of November um, and we do have sound uh, audio volume of 45 percent and um, this is our I believe yeah, wired Ethernet. Okay, so let me go ahead and quit that. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we have. Let me click the application launcher. Let's come up to more applications, and you've got the K SysGuard, you've got the Net Applet, you've got Sakura uh, Terminal, and uh, I think that's what I mentioned. Now, right off the bat, this has got to change. I, I do not like the uh, color combinations that uh, Jim Acklaws used here. Don't know what he was thinking about. Um, it's just, for me, it's unusable. Um, so I will be changing this out. I'm not going to do it now, but uh, if I use this operating system at all long term, uh, I am going to have to uh, to change this out because I just can't live with this uh, color combination. Uh, he may like it, and that's great, but I don't. All right, so you do have this. This is kind of kind of cool. You got uh, your OS, and it does show PC Linux OS host of VirtualBox 1.2, which is what I'm in. The kernel we're using is 5.2.15 or dash PC LOS 1. I've been up for 10 minutes here. We've got 1,801 packages RPM. Um, we've got uh, the Bash shell 4.4.23. We've got a 1920 by 1080 resolution. It is based on the KDE or K desktop environment with a KWIN Windows Manager. Uh, we're using the Breeze theme probably taking it off a of breeze and using something else will fix this issue with the, the terminal. But here we've, we're running the, the breeze theme KDE. We're using the Sakura terminal and here's the fonts and uh, we've got CPU, uh, my Intel i3-7100, 7th generation. Uh, GPU, VMware, SVGA, two adapter which I had to switch to as I told you away from the VBox VGA adapter that I normally use in order to get this thing to even fire up. Um, it wouldn't fire up. It just failed on the, uh, the window manager, X window manager, every time. Couldn't get around it. We're using uh, 466 megabytes out of 4 gigs of RAM. Not bad at all. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and exit the terminal. Get back out. Uh, let's look here at uh, what else we have under more applications. Uh, We've got VBox test me, text or test media and Xterm for archiving. Uh, we've got K3B and My Live GTK for configuration. You can configure your computer, uh, deconf editor, disks, get PC Linux OS, uh, Gparted, which is nice, uh, Grub 2 Splash. We've got the Info Center. We've got install Arctic OS Plasma uh, if you need to reinstall. We've got the K debug settings, the K wallet manager, the login photo, login window, the NTFS configuration tool, printing, and system settings. If I click on system settings, it takes me out here to uh, the appearance, and here's where I can change the global theme. Uh, if I double click global theme, I think we should have probably the basics, right? Breeze, breeze dark. At a minimum, I would change this, switch it to Breeze Dark. Let me go ahead and do that now and apply that. All right, and get a Breeze Dark theme going here. Let's come back out to all settings. Uh, plasma style, we, we can make changes here. 
uh, fonts, icons, and cursors. We've got workspace that we can work with. I'm not going to do a lot of this because I don't have time in this video. I can do some personalization changes here, networking changes, hardware. Uh, let's go down and system information. Okay. So let's go ahead and get out of system settings. Let's get back into uh, here and go down to configuration, um, development. We got Genie uh, editor. Editors, we have Genie here for file tools. We have Bleachbit root and Bleachbit. We've got DD copy and PC Man FM. Under graphics, we got the ebook viewer. We got LRF viewer and shutter. Under Internet, we have the Minitube, the Network Center, the Q BitTorrent Client, Thunderbird Email, UGET, and the Waterfox Web Browser, which I showed you earlier. For Office, we do have the Abbey Word. We've got Caliber. I use Caliber uh, eBook uh, Library Maintenance or Manager uh, platform. I use that all the time in my uh, main PC and most Linux distributions that I fire up and use on a daily basis. Now I'm using my uh, Fedora 31 workstation on my laptop right now. I really love it and I'm staying with Fedora for now because uh, I'm a big Red Hat fan as well so I'm not going to be switching to this uh, distro on my laptop uh, regardless of the review today uh, but uh, Caliber is on my Fedora 31 workstation. And uh, okay, so we've got ebook editor, which is part of Caliber, events PDF viewer, uh, focus writer, and uh, GNUmeric. For software center, let's go ahead and click that. We've got uh, the LibreOffice manager, the localization manager, synaptic package manager, and then of course the VBox guest edition installer and VBox manager, okay, virtual box manager. Um, I notice he's got the LibreOffice suite. I'm not a big fan of LibreOffice. Um, kind of like uh, Backyard Tech, good mate of mine in Australia. He doesn't like LibreOffice either. Uh, I don't really care for it. Um, and what I normally do when I uh, fire up a new Linux distro after testing it out, I, I get rid of LibreOffice and put um, you know, another office manager, either open office, free office is what I'm using right now, I think, in Fedora 31 workstation. Okay, so for sound, you've got Audacious, MPV Media Player, Pulse Audio Volume Control, SM Player, and Voco Screen Recorder. I know this Jim Acklaw is a big uh, fan of Voco Screen. Uh, I have used Voco Screen. Um, I like it okay. I don't like it as well as I do the Simple Screen Recorder. Um, I just have issues with Boco Screen that I have have not been able to work out, and maybe that's me. But um, I, I prefer the simple screen recorder. Under video, we've got uh, Audacious Mini Tube uh, MKV Tool Nix GUI, MPV uh, Media Player, SM Player, and then the Boco Screen Recorder. All right. And then under the power sessions, you've got you can lock your screen, you can log out, you can switch user. You can sleep, you can hibernate, you can restart, and you can shut down. All right. Okay, so this is the, uh, in a nutshell here, uh, the, uh, um, the KDE Plasma version here of Arctic OS 2019-11-13. Uh, um, and we, we've taken a look at the basics here of uh, the operating system. Uh, this the distro and, and you know I have to admit it looks pretty good uh, now that I've got the dark theme going it looks better I would move things around for the first thing I did obviously as you saw me do is move that uh, panel from the left hand side down to here um, I, I just can't handle it up here on the left hand side and that's a personal preference of mine um, there was something I wanted to do here and I can't remember exactly what it was I wanted to do um, I believe I wanted to get into system settings again and take a look at um, trying to remember under network settings, Bluetooth, power, man power management. Let's see what we have there. Um, I do want to look and see if, what kind of backgrounds we have. Let's double click that. Power management. Um, 
screen energy saving, switch off after 10 minutes. I'm going to uncheck that. It was unchecked by default out of the box. Um, so it looks like it's not going to shut down my my screen here uh, for energy saving. I'm, I'm on a, um, you know, main PC, which is not a laptop, so that's not a big issue for me. Uh, under advanced settings here, um, I can't click cancel. Let me go ahead and uh, get back out of this. And let me discard the changes. Um, what do we have here for um, appearance? That's what I'm looking for, for plasma style. Um, yeah, we've got the air, the breeze, the breeze dark, the breeze light, and oxygen. Uh, I believe he had it on breeze. I've, I've switched it to breeze dark. I would probably go and maybe even go into something other. I'll probably go ahead and get a new plasma style, a dark theme. That's a little bit different than what we have even here, but uh, that's okay. I'll do that later on. Uh, I'm not worried about that right now. Um, let me get out of this altogether. Let me right click and uh, configure desktop. And let's see if I can get directly into changing. Here we go. This is the wallpaper. Uh, it's on the desktop layout. Uh, you can switch it to a folder view if you want. Uh, for image here, for wallpaper, I can get new plugins. But here's what we have. We've got the Antarctica scenery, which is uh, not what we have. We have the Antarctica scenery uh, mountains, which is what we have currently here out on the desktop. We've got the next wallpaper, the Rachel Arctic snow. We don't have that one uh, selected. And we have the Shuttercock um, wallpaper as well. All right, so let me go ahead and can cancel that out. Okay, so... Um, this has been a quick review of uh, Arctic OS KDE Plasma. Um, I will tell you that um, I do like what I see here. Uh, I do not like some of the things out of the box, and that's personal preference, but uh, that's just me. Uh, but uh, yeah, go ahead and, and try Arctic OS. Uh, I'll put a link to the um, download for the... Uh, for the uh, ISO here that uh, Jim Acklaw has put up on SourceForge. Uh, I'll put that down below the video because it is Arctic Zero S, not Arctic OS, uh, which kind of threw me off for a, a few minutes until I could figure it out. Um, but I do like what I see here. Um, would this be my daily driver? No. Um, I'm going to stick with Fedora 31 Workstation uh, or an Arch Linux distribution. Uh, this one's an independent, I believe, um, and even though it is nice, it is nice to use. Uh, you know, if you click on PC Man FM, you know, it looks okay, uh, you know, uh, but I just prefer Fedora 31 Workstation to this. Um, it is quite responsive, I will say that, and uh, I mean, I haven't had any problems moving around. It hasn't been sluggish. You know, the, uh, the only thing is that this, this uh, Sakura terminal got to go. I mean, I, I, I would probably go with console and get rid of this altogether. But I would definitely change the color scheming here. It's just, for me, unusable. All right. And so this has been a look at Arctic OS KDE Plasma 2019 uh, from Jim Acklaw in the UK.